All right, folks, welcome back. This is Summer Series. It has arrived. We are so excited, Ben. Why are we excited that Summer Series is here, mate? Because we get to unpack a story each week in regards to someone who's transforming their life, achieving financial peace, and in a lot of cases, also financial contribution. And this week is no different. We lead it off with AJ, and it's a great story about money transformation, mindset, affordability, confidence, budgets, benefits, the lot. It's all in there, and it's a great way to start. It is a wonderful story, Ben. Well wrapped up. Let's rip into the show. Welcome to The Property Couch, where each week you get to listen to two of Australia's leading experts. Bryce Holdaway, co-host of Location, Location, Location Australia on Foxtel's Lifestyle Channel, co-host of Escape from the City on the ABC and partner of Empower Wealth Advisory, Ben Kingsley, Chair of Property Investors Council of Australia and the founder of Empower Wealth Advisory, named the 2018 and 2019 Property Advisory Firm of the Year. Stay tuned as they bring you the Insider's Guide to Property, Finance and Money Management. All right, Ben, welcome back to the Property Catch podcast, mate. The first episode of summer in the me, summer let me series. Just, sorry, mate. Let me just take my sunnies off. The, <laughs> the, sun's, the sun's finally coming through, or I'm I'm pretending it is with all the rain. Well, it comes in everywhere around this country, except for Victoria, <laughs> yeah. let's be honest, Ben. We don't see the sun very often, but summer series, we are pumped. This is the best part of the year. We get to talk to people who've been listening and putting into place action, actionable steps. We hear their stories. We get to see what money was like growing up. It's so cool. So it's and so cool. We're starting super strong, Ben. We are starting very strong. Great story today. But before we get there, we announced it last week. But um you know, Ben, lots of downloads and oh it's been it's- super the, the response, the feedback has been super exciting. But it's just the beginning, Bryce. I mean uh-huh. people are but what are you talking about, Ben? What are you talking about? Well we're talking about the more application or platform that's now on mobile apps so you can take it everywhere around the world with you on your phone so yeah the, the response has been fabulous but we're not done yet we are just warming up some of the stuff coming over the course of the next you know six to twelve months just game changes game changes and here's we're the point in the right shadows of christmas changes. ben in the shadows of Christmas, it couldn't have been better timing because people can now get on yes. top of their provisions, how much money they provo- provision for gifts, how much money they provision for holidays. This is, and they can do it on the go. So, And if you haven't excited. got the book, you can download the book, remember, and which also gives you access and links to either setting up through the web version or downloading the mobile straight off the app stores. So Make Google money Play. Google Play .com. or Apple. Just also remember something when you put into Google Play, it wants to send you to a different more app, M double uh, So you need to see the spell correct, which basically sends you to the uh, proper app. So there you go. With a little there you go, folks. start there. The, the feedback on the video, a promo video, has also been amazing. So if you haven't checked that out on the website, more.com.au, check that out as well because people are saying, oh, man, cool video. You've got me excited. And we're like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. So, folks, that is the theme throughout this whole summer series. We want you to be listening to the stories that you're hearing from the folks, and but but more importantly, taking action where you can get on top of your money, um, ideally through more, so that next summer uh, you'll be appearing and listening to these um, these guests that have got incredible stories. Ben, let's stop banging on. Let's start yep. getting into the summer series now. We had a wonderful conversation with a Property Couch listener. Um, let's cut to that interview now. All right, Ben, we've got a very special guest today on another edition of the Summer Series. We are talking to podcast listener Andrew Ryan, a.k.a. AJ. Um, so welcome to the Property Couch, AJ. Hey, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. We're excited to chat with you. Um, lots to go through. You're a successful property investor, a successful multi-property investor. So we will unpack that shortly. But before we do, AJ, can you let us know um, foundational money principles, mate? When you were eating your peas across the table uh, when you were growing up, um, did your mum and dad talk to you about money? Early on, not so much. Mum and dad probably didn't have much money. Dad was like a labourer and mum worked in a pub. Um, So that early piece up until I was about 14, um, I can remember money being hard to get, hard to hold. Um, and so I was, I was quite conscious of that early on with, um, with my parents, uh, how much they, they would spend on me or, uh, if I had to go on a school camp or something like that, 
I I would sort of just not bring the letter home, wouldn't give that to them, so so that they didn't have to pay for it, yeah, wow. um, and wow. miss out on the on the school camp. So uh, I was pretty pretty aware of that early on. Um, but Do then, they know that story? No. Wow. So still to this day, they don't know that there was camps going on. How did you get to school? Like when the, when you was did you ride walk? Did your mum dad drop yeah, you just off? Yeah, rode a bike. So you were able to. So hence the bus out the front with all the you know the camp bags going on and or the coach and all that. They just yep. basically you 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 kept them away from all of that. Yeah. All right, oh. I've got to go deeper on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here you are at fourteen. You, you, you've obviously got a, a you know wisdom beyond the years in terms of that. Um, why did you do that? I, I just didn't want mum and dad to have to spend money, what I thought might have been unnecessarily, or, or the money that they didn't have. So, so I, I just kept it away from. Them. Yeah. How, how tough was it? I mean, tell us about how tough it was. Can can we, any brothers yeah. or sisters? What's that? Sorry. Any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I've got a younger brother. I've got a brother that's ten years younger than me. Oh, okay. Or nine and a half years younger. Yeah. Quite younger, but so obviously that. So he's he's four. You're fourteen or thereabouts. Yeah. And you're so it is tough. I, I mean, you know, did did they argue about money in the household or was it? No, they didn't really argue about money. I, I just knew that they didn't earn a lot. Um, yeah. You know, you, you look around at what um, what your family has as what cars and things like that and you just know that um you know there's, there's there's other families out there with with better cars and and more things and you know stuff like that so i i think i just um you know had that realization and and just didn't want to make them uh be stretched financially wow it's yeah. funny I, i'm almost the opposite to you and when, when we were growing up my um my mum was uh one of the we were the double double income families early on, so we it seemed like Christmas um, we had we got nice bikes, we got nice things, and it wasn't until we pivoted to teenage years where um, started to see a bit of a difference. We were in a suburb that was further away from the school than most of my mates. I used to ride into the easterly in the morning and the sea breeze in the afternoon, where they used to just trot in. Um, they had better houses, they had better things, they had better stuff. So it was a, a kind of a little pivot there, but. Um, that that is that is incredible. Um, uh, you know, no wonder Ben wanted to to double down on that. But um, what 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 were you actually seeing? You knew it was tight, but were you seeing were you seeing bills over the the, the table? Were you seeing um, stress? Were you seeing just circumstances? What like? Yeah, what? maybe just circumstances, um, and and not not so much no no fighting. Like mum and dad didn't really fight. Um, didn't fight about money. Uh, but yeah, it was just, you know, if, if when I was younger, I would ask for something, it's like, oh, we don't have the money for that or, or, or whatever. And, and whether that's just a throwaway line by, by parents, but I, um, going into this, uh, podcast, I, I knew that you were going to ask about this. So I just asked some questions of mum and dad just recently, just, um, just to say, sort of say, um, you know, were we poor? <laughs> Cause I, I've got this, this thing in my head that I, we didn't have much and yeah mum sort of said yeah things were pretty tight and then everything sort of changed at that point when i was 14. so so there is a pivot there but again for context yeah. um uh, did we have a mortgage were we renting or was mum and dad you know owning a home or buying a home at the time yep mum and dad were they had a mortgage on a okay. on a house yeah and where where are we in terms of where we're growing up around australia yeah, grew up in Taree on the mid north coast of New South Wales. Yep. Yeah, okay. four hours north of Sydney. Yep. So we're at Taree. So again, property prices and land and job opportunities, all of those things are varied considering yes. obviously you're not in the big capital city area. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you, you you effectively make your fun out of, you know, living in a great location like Taree. Yeah, close yeah, to yeah, the beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Close to the beach, close to the bush. Yeah. Um, we had the river and, yeah. And so, so that those those material things weren't as prominent there in terms of, and also keeping up with the trends, the yo-yos, and the you know the skateboards, and the yeah. you know whatever the, the thing was, the Fabergé jeans, and the east, you know East Coast Ooh, tops, and Fabergé. all of that. Like, none that's of that. Bringing back some memories, probably, Ben. That, wait a minute, I'm I'm another generation <laughs> above you. Yeah, so, yeah. so probably all of that just meant nothing to you there. So yeah. Maybe the Walkmans. Generations older than me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, very good. So um, things changed at 14. So take us forward from 14. So um, 
yeah, well, Dad was um, studying. He so he studied and, and did his um, real estate license. Yep. Uh, he bought a struggling real estate in Tari, an agency. Um, so mortgage the house, buy a um, buy a real estate agency, and um, that's the point at when there was open dialogue around money and buying investment properties and the way that you you get ahead and retire early and and things like that. So so that's when it was to me discussed and you know learning about compounding and over the years and uh, and then two years later I bought my first investment property. Wow. First I got, investment I got, property I got, I got 16. Heat <laughs> yep. 16. So how was the contrast there going? So you so you've got all this um, austerity up until 14 then all of a sudden your dad's paradigm has shifted massively. Yeah. Um, yeah for sure. And then you're leaning into investing in real estate and um, abundance. Like, what, what was going on in your head? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, all I knew is that I didn't want to didn't want to have to work, and, and that's what Dad was, I guess, trying to teach me is the, you, you don't want to work until you're 65. At that point, um, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to have to work. You want to, you know, be able to enjoy the the time that you have, and and that was just push hard when you're young and uh, you won't have to push too hard when you're older, hopefully. And, and AJ, t- to your dad's story, if we're allowed to go there, right? Absolutely. He's a labourer, right? That's what you're yep. talking about. Mum's working yep. in a pub. So has he had, has he ever confessed or talked about that he probably wasted his educational years or his school years and and then found himself, like, what you know, what because he did go back to the books and he yep. did reform in terms of, you know, creating a new career. But the bigger piece here is didn't just, st- did he start in real estate or did he just buy the business and then give it a go? Like, he like, just, you know, he just all bought in business and just went, yeah. right, uh, real estate's where I'm at now. And how did he talk to you about, hey, don't make the mistakes that I've made? Or what, what was the messages back in those days when, when he was sort of saying, hey, here's how we're doing it? I'd love to hear that story. Yeah, it was, it was just like, um, yeah, he wanted me to go to university. Um, because because that's something that he didn't do, and I, I think back then there was there was a real push on going to university to get you know, go to school, get good grades, go to uni, and then get a good job, earn good money, and your life will be easy, you know, and you won't have to use your hands and struggle. And but that just wasn't me. I, I'm I'm not I'm not an academic. Um, yeah, so. But it, but it does tell a good story here, right? Because I want to go. I want to go one generation back in a minute. Yeah. But I'll tell you a little bit about you know, sort of. My dad was similar. He tells. He told me a story when I was quite young about all of his mates left school really early and they got labouring jobs, and they were earning the big bucks because back in the time labourers got more because you had to do an apprentice or apprenticeship or something along those lines. So his mates are all out there buying cars and having a good time. Then he got no money, right? Because he's basically on apprenticeship wages. Um, and then you fast forward 10, 15, 20 years, and they're all still on the same wages because they didn't yep. create a career. They didn't, you know, get a skill or a trade or something like that. And ultimately through that. Um, tell me about your mum and dad's story in terms of their generations. Were they, did they grow up also um, in the lower socio demographic or, you know, is it? Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah. So, that, so um, hence their model didn't fall too far from the tree. They're following right. in their footsteps of their dad. So, so, so your dad has broken that mold. When yes. he's how old is he in his 30s? Yeah, so oh geez, he might have been about 35, 36, yeah. I suppose. Okay. Yeah. And was there any yeah. preparational planning leading up to that in terms of saving enough money before he went in and bought? I mean, as you said, he remortgaged the property. But yes. Did he, you know, was there a buffer there? Like, tell, did he speak much about that in terms of the calculated risk and the mitigation of risk that he was doing? <sighs> Maybe not. Like I, I probably even, you know, I was young, only fourteen when they, when they bought the business, so I, I probably wasn't really switched on yeah. to what they were talking about then when when buying businesses and and things like that. But um, sorry, he would have been about 40, 42, I suppose, when he bought the okay. business. So he's pretty late on, I guess, mm. as to start start building it. A, a, but a lot of out. life skills, a lot of life experience, and you know, yeah. Good- and could relate to the common the person in the area, right? Like yeah, obviously, yeah, sure. 
and that's you know people by people and and so great real estate agents can connect with people and understand all of that so wow so there's the big pivot okay which got yeah. you to where you want to get to <laughs> yeah so you, was, you, didn't, you didn't want to do the um you didn't want to do the university path so your paradigm's changing at 14 so what's happening you you have you uh, did you get um pocket money school jobs um yeah what what is your first job look I like i got a got a job at um big w uh stacking shelves and on the checkout uh at big w when i was 14 nine months like straight down there yeah. I, I knew that um I, I wanted to start earning earning money and then uh when i was in year 10 i was i was Left school when I was 15 and I got an apprenticeship. And uh, in the first year of that apprenticeship is then when I uh, bought the house. I'd saved $10,000 in, and I was only earning, in, with the apprenticeship, I was only earning $10,000 a year um, wow. in, the, in the first first year, $10,200. Yeah. So you saved 10000 in the first year when you're earning 10200 before tax. So Yeah, because um, I'd saved a bit with the big W uh, job. Big w job, yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. so were you always a delayed gratification person? Did you actually have any spending? Like were you a spender early on when you got your first way, first pay packet? No, not really. I, I really liked seeing the it go up every week. Yeah. Um, and but when when I'd saved all this money and uh, you know, I'm still only 16, so I don't have a license yet. Well, I've got my L's, but um, you know, dad came to me and said, What are you gonna do with your money? And there was this Black Gemini coupe that I thought, yeah, that's what uh, I want. That black as and, well. Um, Did it have air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> and so it, he he basically said, nah, that's that's not what you want to do. Um, like put your money into houses. And um, so we looked around for a house for a little while, and and my budget, I think at the time was was around sixty four thousand dollars, and it is is all I wanted to to spend and and I, I went to an auction and obviously it, you know being 16 you have to buy that in a trust um because you're not old enough to sign a legal document um but uh so that was mum going to an auction we're standing there and we got outbid at 68,000 and uh went ah missed that one and a few months went by and then um yeah I end up getting my first house for 74,000. In, in you, move, you move the budget up. Yeah, yeah. Big bucks. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a little help from mum and dad on that one uh, to move the budget up from 64 to 74? Or no, was it no. just that you kept saving? Yeah, just kept saving, kept, kept, kept going. It's, it's yeah. always interesting to reflect back then, isn't it, too, AJ? Because, you you know, I, I say it tongue in cheek, 74,000 big bucks, but it yeah. was big bucks then. That was oh, like, it's seven times my income. Yeah, the yeah. adrenaline was up. And yeah. um, so, so it kind of gives you a. Uh, a first um, step onto the ladder. Now, um, did you move into it or did you put a tenant in? I uh, put a tenant in um, yeah. straight away. It was, I think it was, it might have already been tenanted um, mm. and it was paying then $140 a week. Yeah. Um, so it just paid for itself straight away. And, and then, you know, year 2000 and then into 2001, dad was sort of saying, oh, property prices going up, like that property that you bought, it's probably worth, I don't know. 110 now and i'm thinking yes i am a legend <laughs> um, you know i've made all this money uh, on paper uh yeah and it, it was a great feeling and, and, and then I, I was hooked you know that's that's what i wanted to do then yeah all right can we double click on um just the process so you're 16 as you said um you needed to yep. buy it in a trust so yep. tell us a bit about the trust and the banking structure. How did you go about doing that? Because obviously this is, you know, most of our listeners don't understand that when you're under 18, yeah, you know, you can't basically be put on a title. Um, so, yes. and then how did you transition or is that still in the trust today? It's still within the trust today. Um, yep. So that's in the, the family trust, yep. which I'm a beneficiary of the trust and, you know, all those sorts of things. And, and so is my brother and, stuff like that but it's just kind of you know it's always just okay that's aj's house over there and then so if the unfortunate happens that sort of you know it, it, it'll probably be messy one day but we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. see how we go it's gonna, yeah it's, it's well i mean i think trusts have got an 89 year or 90 year life cycle so it's going to get it is going to get messy at some point um mm. the uh but so take me through how did you get the equity out of it or did you get the equity out of it in no. terms of, 
So here's the, so here's the challenge, right? So yes. so ultimately, we've talked about this before. It's a bit like you know when you're buying in self managed super funds. Um, the problem with them is you can't release the equity to go again. You can only refinance the existing debt. So there, there are limitations with certain types of vehicles, but it got you in the game. Yes. And, and here's it got you the teachings and the lesson and the action and the takeaways from that. So it was the mindset. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So, so you just look yeah, at that property. Property number two. What happened, yeah. what happened with property number two then? Um, so when I was just like, I'm just going to buy a house every year. This is easy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then, you know, then, then I got into cars and, and spent a fair, fair amount of time wasting money on cars and, and things like that. Um, but then in 2005, I think it was 2005, I bought another house in Tari, the house next door to the first house. Yeah. Um, and I, I paid $145,000 for that, that house and got the first home buyers because I wasn't on the title for the, the first house. Um, so I got first home buyers for that. Um, and I think my deposit for that one was about $12,000 mm-hmm. of, of my own money. And then, you know, no stamp duty. Government kicked in seven, I think. And then I lived in that place for the six months that I had to legally live in that house for to yeah. qualify for that, that money. Um, and then I put a tenant in that place. Uh, so that was yeah, 2005, uh, and oh, and so that, at that point I'm in the army. So I finished the apprenticeship, and then I joined the army and did another apprenticeship, the electrical apprenticeship that I currently do now. Okay, so let us piece some of this together. So what I'm interested in is um, what's the flag on the top of the mountain at this early stage, right? When a lot of your friends would be um, using their money to um, to do stuff on Friday night and Saturday night, you're planning to get into real estate. But what was yep. the vision? Did, did dad plant the seed that you'd buy these and sell them and get some cash? Did he plant the seed that you buy them and you eventually get the rental income? What was driving the momentum forward to keep you in the game? Yeah, so at that point, because house prices are, weren't that expensive, it was basically you buy one house, say it goes up $10,000 a year. If you had two, you made $20,000 a year. If you had three, you made 30. Like just, just keep buying them. Simple and math. Every year it'll just keep going up in value. So I was just like, oh, well, that's, that's not real hard math to understand. No, <laughs> I only went to year 10, but I can work that out. Um, yeah, so for me, it was just collect as many as you can, hold them forever, and someone else will pay them off, and, and then I won't have to work to actually get money. Andrew, I think there's an important point that you just said there, right? Because you said, um, to quote you, I only went to year 10, I can work that out. But I think it's an important thing to consider because there's a bunch of people who are listening to this and sometimes the more you um, get into traditional um, uh, longevity around traditional education system, um, sometimes the harder it is to take the leap because you then you, you get into, you know, you get caught up in the wheel, you know, and get stuck on the axle and paralysis by analysis. And whereas you just, you just kept it simple. I buy them. I get the second one. I get it for 20. And so it, it, that actually became, uh, do you see that as an advantage in um, the very important um, part of property investing, which is taking action? Um, did you did you just see, have you reflected in the rear vision mirror how that was an advantage for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And none of the properties that I own, I actually looked at before buying. Oh. Um, so that there was no emotional attachment to them. It was just, do the numbers work? Yes, buy. I, have, I, I would ring that up and say, I've got X dollar. I've got twelve thousand dollars. Dad, can I buy another house? And he'd say, "Yes, go." Okay, okay find me one. Great. What What about the lending bit? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, okay, you got a deposit bit. That's all right. <laughs> Dad, I got a deposit. You also need to service the debt. So obviously, it was because of the yield story that yes. the the lending. And back in those days, lending was a lot easier yeah, than it sure. is today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, I was then. An apprentice in the army earning about fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and then yeah, bought that second one, um, and and just getting the loan. I, I think Dad just basically organised it for me to a to a certain degree. Um, sat with me and we filled out the paperwork and I signed here and um, and then it wasn't till I owned the house for a couple of weeks and I came back from Sydney to um, to actually view the that house. Um, yeah. 
And have I got have I got it right? That's the one next to the one. That's yes, just the second one. So you've got a land banking situation with a trust and you individually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's workable. How many how many townhouses can we get on it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a thousand square meters combined. So. Oh, there yeah, you go. RE though, so it's probably uh, preferred houses. But uh, get the get the next one next door, and all of a sudden you put three red hotels on. You're laughing. So right, that's <laughs> what, that's what the plan was. But. <laughs> so you uh, moved into the second one. Uh, first homeowners grant you needed to be in for six months because the first yep. one you said seventy four thousand with one forty a week. That's incredible yep. positive cash flow there. But what yep. about this one when you when you actually did eventually move out and put a tenant in? Can you remember what that initial rent was ballpark was? I, I think it was about. That one fifty yeah. a week. It's a smaller, it's a smaller place. It's a two bedroom, no garage, um, fibro, whole sort of. Still good yield though, just over five percent. So, um, so so we and we should build some context for our audience here. So you're currently thirty eight years of age. So you've you've now been investing uh, since you were fourteen. So what are we? Twenty four years. So twenty two. Yeah. Can I count? Um, 38 16, minus 40. Oh, 16, 16, not 40. Yeah, 16. Oh, Start a work for it. I can no, count. No. I just can't listen, Ben. So let's just be clear. <laughs> um, so you've been doing this for some time, like the yep. same amount of time as, as me, and I'm a little older than you. Um, so you've gone from the, the, the second property. What, what, what happened next? Uh, so then just that was renting out, doing doing its thing pretty, pretty well. Uh, and then I'm in the army. I got posted to Darwin. And then deployed to Afghanistan. And when I came back from Afghanistan, you know, you, you sort of you can't spend any money over there, um, and you come back with a, a bunch of cash in the bank. Uh, so then I I called Dad again and said, "Hey, I'm ready to go again." And he said, "Yeah, there, there's on on the main road, Tarek Blue House. You might have seen it. I've never never seen it." Um, and I've still never been in that that house, and that was in two thousand and nine. I I bought that place. Um, so just yeah. just the green shoots coming out. Of, well, actually, what what time in two thousand and nine? Uh, end of two thousand and nine. Okay. Like, so green um, shoots just coming out of GFC. So yes. we think about you know what's been happening um, globally, uh, money crunch, interest rates going up. Um, but market's starting to, yeah, you know, starting to realise that it's actually it's still a reasonably depressed. I think I bought Mooney Ponds in 2009 as well, um, just, you know, sort of in that time frame where it was just still a bit of uncertainty, but stimulus coming in from the Rudd government, I think, if I recall correctly, around yeah. that time. So the economy trying to bounce. We had the one negative quarter, but we, we did uh, effectively keep our run going in terms of, um, you know, GDP for the country. Yeah, it, it and, and the, the numbers just worked on that one. I think that was uh, that was one hundred eighty seven thousand that place, and it rented for one hundred ninety or two hundred dollars a week. Um, and and I, I remember being in Darwin and, and people people sort of saying, "Oh, you can buy a place in Darwin, buy an investment property in Darwin, and get six hundred bucks a week rent. That's fantastic." I'm like, yeah, but you got to spend five hundred thousand dollars to do it. Um, and I was sort of more like, well, I can buy places in Tari for two hundred thousand dollars and get the same rental yield, but spread my risk over two properties. As far as if a tenant moves out, well, then I I just have I've only lost two 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 hundred dollars a week or two fifty a week, or, and uh, yeah. Whereas tenant moves out in Darwin, you lose five or six hundred a week. Yeah, so that that was that was my mindset. It's a bigger risk. I don't know if it was right or not. <laughs> Two questions for you. One, did your dad drop his pants on commission when you bought it or did he, uh, did he give full tilt just uh, on your sale? You don't have to answer that, just tongue-in-cheek. Second, um, uh, to help people who never grew up in a um, uh, in like these regional towns back in these times, you know, we talk about, oh, buy for 74, got 140 a week, you buy for 145, you're getting about 150 a week. This one, you just 187, you're getting 190 to 200. Um, what was the what was the vacancy rates like? Were you finding tenants easy? Was there turnover? Was there any any challenges getting that first tenant? The tenant in the first property, um, they've been there for nineteen years. That's, yeah, and I've <laughs> I've never really had any issue um, having someone in that you know someone might move out two weeks later with someone else in there. So. 
Um, and how have you dealt with um, incremental um, ratcheting up of the rent with someone that's been there for 19 years? Yeah, I think it, the real estate just kind of looks after that, yeah. um, Thanks, which Dad. was my dad's real estate, obviously. <laughs> um, and, yeah, they would just bump it up every, every so often and say, we think it's time for a rent raise. Gotcha. And, and any problem tenants along the journey so far? Yeah, I, I've had one in the, in the second house um, where they just, you know, I think they had some young kids and some windows got smashed and stuff like that. Then they end up doing a runner. Um, but all in all, I think that little exercise might have cost me a couple of grand, two or three thousand just to get some repairs done and um, obviously some rent lost. But when, you, when, you, when the rents aren't that, that much, you don't lose that much money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. So, okay. So, um, we've got property number three. Um, that's chugging along nicely, as Ben put. It was at sort of in the shadows of a of a major event in the GFC. So, um, okay. Tell, tell us what happens next. What happens after? Uh, the then, so I was in Darwin. I got out of the army, but stayed in Darwin and was planning to live my life in Darwin. But, you know, you, you start getting a bit homesick and um, Darwin's a long way away. <laughs> um for, for someone in Taree because you've got to catch you know two planes you've got to go to Sydney then fly from Sydney up to Taree and then you don't have a car and now it's just it, it makes things a bit tricky to to get home so I, I was kind of like we, we want to move back was with my then partner want to move back but we didn't want to move back to Taree like we the minimal opportunity there um compared to somewhere like Newcastle so that's where we settled on settled on Newcastle and um and I I bought a house in Newcastle, you know, just looking on realestate.com. Mum and dad went down on the weekend and had a look through the place and um, we put an offer in and I bought of it. You did. Yeah. Of course you did. So what, what, what were the numbers? What, 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 how much was that one in Newcastle and what year are we talking? Sorry. Uh, that was 2010. 2010, yep. Yeah, end of 2010. Uh, or Yeah, yep, yeah, end of 2010. Uh, and then that was 340000 Oh, so you're starting to step it up. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and I was, I was really I was really worried. I was like, oh, wow, 340000 that is going to stretch us big time. Um, put down a $60,000 deposit on that one and and then used a little bit of equity from the other now two that, I, that are in my name. Um, and we moved straight back down. I just didn't want to rent. I, I just, I just seen renting as dead money and... I was just going to do everything I could to not not rent. So there's a story of financial discipline here, right? Um, it's coming up really clearly in the sense that uh, you're not a spender. You're absolutely a saver. Um, but you did. There was a clue there that there was a period on hobbies, which was the car piece. So yep. you, did, you did scratch that itch. Yep. Anything else you've scratched an itch on that's actually cost you a bit of coin? Uh, oh, there, yeah, well, there was, uh, cars have, cars have been pretty consistent over the, over the time <laughs> as well, but, um, yeah, I, I'm into older cars now and, you know, I've got a few old cars and, and, uh, did you get the yeah, Gemini? Get, you get that you Toronto? Or... Gemini? I didn't get the Gemini. I've, I've got a, uh, I've got a Holden Tirana, uh, XU1 <laughs> sort of copy, yeah. uh, a, a Kingswood and a, and a mini panel van. Oh, so oh, you know, move the Gemini to get to the Kingswood to get the Toronto. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, like, mate, you're going to take Ben down memory lane here. This is right in your vintage Ben at your age. Hey, so. mate, I yeah. HT, I'd a HT two speed power glide Kingswood. Um, so <laughs> and it was a yeah beautiful station wagon. I, it'd be worth a fortune these days. It was sitting here, yeah. sitting in the paddock of my parents' property for a while, and some bloke came and bought it for five hundred bucks. Probably worth uh, about twenty, thirty thousand dollars yeah, now. Yeah. Stepping over to vintage. So <laughs> anyway, I want to I want to keep double downing on the money management story here. I came. Um, when you're doing when you're doing your money management, how do you set yourself up? What are you What are you doing about budgeting? How do you forecast? Or because you're very diligent in terms of spending, is it just that it's just accumulating? And yeah. ultimately, I've never had an actual budget in place. Um, and and it it's just I, I just don't spend much money on on stuff that I don't think I need, um, and and I, I just like to see the the bank balance going up each week, and as long as it's doing that, I've, I've been pretty happy up until you know recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we'll get what? to the recently bit in a minute. Yes. But so, so, and so that's it. So uh, running an offset, so primary account, all the income coming into that bucket um, on the principal place of residence, all of that rent coming in, or are you one of those people that set it up that the rent goes in on the loan attached to that property? Yeah, it would just all come into one account, offset Excellent. account against the main good, good. property. Um, and until I've just refin- I refinanced everything at really good interest rates below below two percent a few years ago. So that they'll be they'll be coming, coming coming out. Uh, Did you leave any provisioning year. for a variable amount for the offsets, or no? You no, I didn't. It on fixed. I, I didn't. They they just the whole thing's fixed. Um, yeah. And and it was only recently I think you guys were talking. Uh, to someone about splitting the mortgage. And I went, oh, God, that would have been a great idea. Um, <laughs> How yeah. come your investment savvy mortgage broker didn't tell you that? <laughs> Never had one. <laughs> oh, okay, you're dealing directly with a bank. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're Same not going to tell you that. No, no. <laughs> not in their interests. Yeah. So, so, mate, you gave us a little insight there, and I wonder if um, uh, we, we're going to get to the uh, the crescendo of this story as we build it, but um, your only goal at the time was seeing in- increase increase yes. increase there wasn't like a um was there any word that resonated with you did you want to be wealthy or financially free or you wanted a passive income or you wanted to retire from work or was it just accumulation of assets at that point in time after this fourth one uh since i started work i've been just really keen to not work um yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as just retire um yeah dad was dad was just like if you do this you'll be able to retire before anyone else and um and you'll be able to just get to do whatever you want um, and not have to work for it, not have to do physical work for it. And, and that was just all I've been sort of pushing for, I think. Get rid of that exertion income. <laughs> yeah. Were you dad's protege or was, uh, and he was living it through you or was he investing in property as well? Once he- yeah, he, he's invested in, in a few properties as well, yeah. Nice. So not a bad yeah. mentor. Have your dad as a mentor in terms of taking- Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I owe, I owe mum and dad everything. Um, you know, they've, they've taught me everything. So, Wow, that's incredible. That's that's a wonderful story. So we've got uh, we've got Newcastle. You paid three forty. dollars There's a $60,000 deposit plus some equity from a previous one. It's um, blown your hair back a little bit because that's big dollars for you. So what, what happens yeah. there? How long were you in Newcastle? How long were you in this property? And then what happened next? Um, so I remember buying that property and uh, and dad's like, because yeah, I'm, I'm going 340,000 that's that's pretty massive um you know surely these and you know I, I've I've now lived it for 10 years or, or, or so uh and I'm going property prices cannot rise <laughs> no way. they're not going past 340 that is the <laughs> well, ridiculous no in the past it's gone up but it's not going up ever again can't. it's never going to go up it's going to tap out I mean that. people can't get any more income like they can't get any more debt there's no way known property prices can go up in this country. <laughs> and, and and dad was like, no, nah, give it, give it 10 years, this will be worth 700. And I'm just going, no oh, way. way. My dad's lost his marbles, you know. <laughs> I, I thought you're you're crazy, Dad. And and today, like, um, you know, that, that house is easy worth seven hundred thousand every day of the week. Wow. Um, yeah. So well, yeah, that's sort of you know. 12 years now, on. Now, AJ, so you said you had a, your then partner, if I heard you correctly about being in yeah. Darwin. So when yeah. you move back, is, is that your current partner? And because you, because we can, no? No. Okay. No, so, so um, uh, we, we moved back from, from Darwin, bought that house together in our names. Uh, we got married and, um, and that relationship broke down yep. and, um, and we, Got divorced and sort of pretty typical for me. I'll I'll just I'll just run. Uh, so I got a job in Antarctica. Um, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So but did you um, set, so you decided to buy out her share? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so we we got valuations and then so that would have that was in 2015. Yep. Um, and house prices hadn't really done anything between sort of 2010 and 2015 um, in Newcastle. New, like South, New South Wales. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. So especially um, with the uh, stamp duty investors tax. Yep. Yes. You know, in terms yes. of that killed it. Yep. Uh, and, and our soldier, stand down. 
so yeah, so I, I got a job with um, the Antarctic Division and and went to Antarctica for twelve months and um, yeah, can't spend any money there. No, exactly. You can't spend any money. Um, <laughs> and what an experience! So yeah, uh, it's can you just summarise that experience for us in a couple? You know, in a couple of minutes, like how good? Uh, like what? How amazing is it? Right? It's every single day you walk. You wake up, walk outside, and it's just a postcard moment. Doesn't matter what the weather's doing; it's just completely different every day. Um, it's it's a really special place. Yeah! Wow! Yeah. For those and, people who who have been through um, uh, a relationship challenge, how, how did that go? Because um, you because you obviously had assets that were in the marital situation. You Ben asked the question about did you buy out the share and that was there any any um, um, or part of previous properties that were part of that settlement? Yeah, so um, I had to pay out the the other properties because we'd been together for 14 years, although her name wasn't on any of those. It was just, okay. Classified as, classified yep. as a, yeah. a, a, a de facto relationship. Full relationship. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep. So, um, yeah, so that um, that cost me 150 yeah. uh, to, to pay that out. Just with what we owed and and uh, where where everything was at then. Yep. Uh, so, was there I, any I temptation? Sorry to jump in. Was there any yep. temptation to sell rather than yes. than buy out? Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was I kind of threw my hands in the air and and said, well, um, let's just sell everything then, and uh, and you, you just get what you get, and I get what I get, and we'll we'll walk away. And and Dad sort of said. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Uh, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Good advice, Dad. If you're listening, another yeah. another, <laughs> another great mentor egg. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so and, and any challenges with the bank? Obviously, dual incomes versus single incomes to get any of those things refinanced. To, I mean, I'm assuming you just didn't pay cash straight out of the bank. Did you get a loan, or did you need to? How did that work? Yeah. So just top those loans yep. right back up. Um, yep. There was yeah, there was a fair bit of redraw in two of them or three of them. Um, yep. Yeah, so I just redrew everything I could and um, and then just yep. topped them right back up. And, and no and servicing up. challenges at all sort of because the yields were pretty good? Yep. Yeah, yields were pretty good. And yep. uh, so I was we, we were living in one uh, and then, then I went to Antarctica and then just started renting that property out. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and then I got back from Antarctica and, um, Back to Terra Firmus Australis. Yep. Yes. And, <laughs> Not so uh, postcard every day. What, what, what was the next move when you came back? Where did you live? Uh, so then I, just before going to Antarctica, I, I met my current wife, um, and which, which was a big challenge to say, hey, this is, this is relationships going great. I'm just going to nick off for 12 months. Yeah, you're and, a bit of um, all right. I'm going to see yes. you in 12 months. Time. Yeah. Feel free to, feel free to come and visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that land? Yeah. Um, I mean, she, she's great. She's stuck, stuck by me through that. And, um, and then when I got back, everything, everything went great for, I think I was back for, I was back for a few months and I was just like, let's buy a house. I, I don't want to rent anywhere. Um, she was renting. And I was just like, let's buy a house. This, I think we can make this work. Um, so let's not move back into the other property in Newcastle. Let's just buy a new no, one. Create new uh, memories. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, right out. And yeah, we, we did talk about that and that, you know, that could have been, you know, issues or, or something. But um, yeah, it was just like, all right, cool. Well, you know, I've been away for 12 months. I've been able to save money. I didn't, you know, try and, catch back up to those loans. I just went, oh, well, they, they, they are what they are now and, um, and I'll, I'll just use cash to buy the next thing. Yep. Um, and we, we looked around in Newcastle for, um, for a few, fair few months, like just looking, 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 going to open houses. Uh, I think we, we put in a few offers and um, so this would have been, this is 2017. Um, so the market's moved. And the market has moved, yeah, yeah big time. Yep, yep. Um, which which was good because um, I, I'd spoken to the, the bank and, and sort of said, you know, how much can I borrow? Um, and they said, oh, you should be able to get six hundred, no worries. And I went, oh, geez, like, you know, from that three hundred and forty, which they were never going to go past <laughs> there. Um, 
yeah. So I'm looking at a house for around 600 and um, I bought, um, oh, we found a property just, you know, using realestate.com um, and uh, look, looking at places and, and just a suggested place came up and I drove past it that afternoon and um, called the called the real estate and sort of said, oh, when's the next open house? When I looked through, um, they said, oh, an offer's been accepted. I said, uh, what was the offer? They told me. I just said, would you take, well, they said 5.30, would you take, I just said, would you take 5.40? Um, and they were, they were all like, oh, no, we don't, we don't accept offers unless you've been through the place and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like scrambling because I was, I was just like, I need to get this place. I love the block. I love the rear access or side access. Um, it's in Spears Point around Lake Macquarie. Um, it's a great part of the world. Um, and they put it to the, the, um, the owner uh, after I sort of said, oh, you're Century 21. My dad is ah. Century 21 in Tari and, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm legit. And, Using uh, all angles, all leverage, anything. Yeah, 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 good, good. So um, they accepted the offer and um, and the first, so that they said you have to exchange unconditionally tomorrow, 10% deposit brought into the real estate. Then and there, bank check, straight in, all that, all that. And I, I still, I hadn't had, I hadn't had finance approved. It was just a phone call to the, the bank a few months ago saying, can I borrow 600? And they said, yeah, yeah, you should be able to do that. Yeah. Now this is a this is a really good it's a really good story for the community. Um, New South Wales is pretty good at this stuff. It's called gazumping, um, and if you don't have an exchange of contract um, whereby the signatures are physically exchanged or in each other's possession, you can be gazumped. You can you can have your lunch eaten on you, uh, and that's unfortunately what happened to that other party because a verbal. Um, agreement doesn't stack up as a contractual obligation um, in New South Wales. Could be different in other states, um, and I'm sure there's probably case law where that's been tested in the past, but it's very clear in New South Wales um, that even if you've had an offer accepted and it's been verbalised to you, you must exchange contracts so no one can come in and gazump you. So Even if you've signed. So that's why it's called exchanged, because yeah. you've actually physically exchanged signed copies. And uh, unless you've got that signed copy exchange by the vendor even if you've signed it it's all gone yeah um, i can tear it up without exchange so there you go so that's a good little lesson there. but thanks aj that's that's good aj 540 mate so three three hundred and forty thousand. some seven years earlier prices are never going above that and then all of a sudden you're now paying 540 so you're actually betting against yourself here um, yeah, talk yeah. Us, talk I, us through talk us through what's going on 540 big dollars big dollars um so yeah that was uh no, I'd seen the market move and, and and that's probably when I was really started to get interested in in property, um, five houses in, and was started listening to podcasts and started started doing research and actually doing the numbers and and, and at this point I'm still working for someone. Um, and I started really looking at numbers and, and how much I'd spent on houses and and like what their current values are and all those sorts of things, um, and I really got bogged down in the numbers and, and just and not bogged down, but just loved it. Loved watching the the money come in each week or each month, and understanding where everything's going, and then projected um, values in the future. You know, 20, 30 years time uh, when they're when they're all paid off, and and I can not have to work. <laughs> <laughs> Get the plan right. So, Spears Point. I've just looked that up. It's a nice little spot on Lake Macquarie. So you, uh, you, you move there. Um, you and your new partner. Um, yep. You settle in there. Um, how? So what happened there? You, you, you know, how long were you there? And then, because it's not the end of the story for you. No. Um, so we love the spot. We love the love the neighbours. You know, great neighbours. Love the street just down the road from the bowling club, just across the road to the to the lake and the. And Spears Point Park, it's great. Um, so we were like, yeah, this is where we are going to build our family home. Um, we're going to do renovations and, and things like that. And and renovation, we got some prices on, indicative prices on renovations and, and reno costs are just mounting up to like 400000 450000 for the renovation that we wanted to do. 
Um, I'd started working for myself, so um, getting a loan was going to then prove tricky, um, being, being new into business for myself. And then so we thought, okay, we're, we're just going to have to wait. We're just going to have to wait. Um, and then once you know, business established, we thought, okay, well, let's revisit this. Maybe we don't do the renovation. Maybe we knock down, rebuild. We can move back into one of the other places, live there whilst the house is getting built, and that all um, just got a bit too hard. We had it had the birth of our first son, um, and uh, we were there five years, and it, it just got a bit hard to do or either renovate or knock down, rebuild. So we decided um, we would just uh, buy another place. Around the corner, yeah, of course. <laughs> Up the spot, when, the well, corner. give us the timing. Is that that sounds like that was just recent, right? In the last, it's very recent. Months? Yeah, yeah, that was in April of, of this year, March, okay. April. Yeah. All right, and are we holding our breath? What did we pay? Like, are we? <laughs> Surely like... you didn't pay more than three hundred and forty. Come on, <laughs> uh, slightly more than that. We paid uh, one point three five million. <laughs> there we go. All right, there it is. <laughs> and like in terms of that. Tell us about the story that you've gone through because I, I I guarantee you've gone through this story because I can relate to all of that owner occupied non deductible debt. AJ, yeah, I know. Like it's I like know. like it's the wrong way around, mate. Like how are you feeling about that? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's funny to um to pay more for one property than the entire sum of five <laughs> others. Um, <laughs> That's, that's a little bit weird to get your head around to start with. Um, you know, business is doing well. My partner, she does well uh, at her work as well. So um, it, it meant that we were able to, to get into a, into a place like that. And we bought that um, just through a, a friend, um, you know, private sale, um, which they knocked sort of 50 grand off the, off the price oh, for us to do that. So good that, friend. Well, the yeah, agent's not getting a commission. They get it. That certainly helps. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. And he was a real estate agent, the, the guy that we bought it off. So, uh, okay. yeah, he was kind of like, oh, we'll just not do this. And, yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. So, so we rounded uh, out, Bryce. Yeah, we got six properties um, uh, with an incredible story to uh, um, get us along the way. So, uh, what what is the um, what is the sum? Um, you just said that the, you paid more for one than you did for the rest but that that's not quite right if i do the sums it's actually the rest of them are worth more than 1.35 they're, they're worth more than that now yeah that's ah oh, so but it was only recently so <laughs> yes. yeah of the of the original purchase price. oh the okay, original we get it. We get purchase it. Yeah, 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 price yeah, yeah. see ben i told you i don't listen very well so there we go <laughs> um so okay so what's the value of the portfolio now about four and a half million four and a half million all right and what is the um, what is the updated goal for you now, AJ? You've got a young family. Um, you've now gone on a journey uh, with your new wife, um, and you have what sounds like a dream home um, for you in a in a wonderful location. Have you upgraded your thinking around what these properties can provide for you in terms of lifestyle design? Um, and when I use the word upgrade, I don't. It's just loosely because previously it was just I want to see them continuing to go up in value. But um, as most new parents do when they become parents, their paradigm shifts just a little bit and their priorities change. So, what what is what is the flag on the top of the mountain for you now? Um, what is it? What is it that you want to use the properties as a vehicle for? Um, which part of your lifestyle design? Yeah, well, uh, currently the rent that's brought in is 112,000 a year. So that we're, I've, I've cracked you $2,000 a week. Mm. Um, nice. <laughs> so that, that's, that's good. So um, just sort of to be able to spend more time with, with the little fella and, um, you know, and, and if we have any future kids, um, to be able to spend time with, with those guys uh, yeah. and the family. And um, Is that the plan? Looking, I mean... A number two or something like that is yeah yeah number yeah. number two will come along and I mean yeah. if this guy starts sleeping a bit more <laughs> yeah oh. and have you done the models like uh, have you sort of cash flowed no we, we w- haven't and that, that's why I want to really use the the more platform for is to is to like get some line aside yeah on get here. some yep. yeah like make the invisible visible yeah beautiful. Nice. 
Is the queue yeah. in the rack, uh, AJ? Are, are you are you happy with seven and it's a uh, pivot to debt retirement for the portfolio? Because um, we didn't talk about how much debt's left, but um, or are you are you just an accumulator? Are you are you like Dad kept yeah. saying buy? Got to ring yeah. him up. Uh, Got to ring him up uh, and ask the three key words: Should I buy? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, I mean, there's um, two point two point three in debt. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Two point three in debt. Um, it, like that's including the the big one we just just bought. Yep. But um, just the investment properties. There's there's only thirty three percent LVR on on those. Property, so so they're doing pretty well, and that very can well. sort of um, substitute my income if I uh, decide to. So my, my goal is to take the year twenty thirty off work and travel around Australia. Um, that's the that's the goal. Uh, but but yeah, I think I think I'm done. Uh, uh, I don't think I need to buy anymore. Um, once you like, you guys always sort of talk about, you know, two or three good quality investments is, is all you all you really need to get that 100K a year, 2,000 a week sort of passive. And having five just, it, it starts to get a little tricky with just managing them. Um, it's, it, it would be easier to have three than it is <laughs> to have five. And, and that's like a first world problem to have, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I'm probably done but I, I really want to instill that into my kids as far as like you work hard you can achieve this like I mean I'm going to have be able to give them a, a really good lifestyle I, I hope um, and 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 we shouldn't have to struggle too yeah, much. There's, a le- there's a legacy piece in that um, very much so and and part of you know part of your considerations could be because um, I'm obviously with Tari and so forth Tari's price valuations will be a flow on effect of affordability and you know again the economic activity in that area as you said didn't want to go back to Tari there's no you know no big job prospects no good income prospects in those areas so we settled for the bigger more localized community but we didn't go and we didn't want to go on big smoke so yeah an option could be in terms of you know turning those assets um selling them paying down some of the principal place of residence there and then you know, basically rebooting, taking the equity out and getting, you know, one more substantial asset so you don't have to manage as, as much as that. Or the other option is just keep keep them running, right? Like ultimately yeah. keep them going. But just be mindful that over 20, 30, 40 years, they're not going to grow as much as the, the assets That's in right. bigger yeah. economic and, and, and I knew that. I, I, yeah. I'd never That's chased... the trade-off. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd never chased capital growth. Um, I've never, never chased that. As, and and I, I was always of the opinion, well... Well, that's not going to get me to retirement. Um, if, if I, if the rents keep going up, they'll naturally go up in value because of that. But it, it was always just rental returns yep. is is what I was looking at because a safe path. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But you know, but again, the trade off on those safe paths is that I'm sacrificing an opportunity cost of growth. Um, I may, on occasion, you know, have uh, difficult tenants. But having yes. your dad as the real estate agent absolutely helps, right? In terms yeah. of yeah. choice of quality tenants in the area going into a certain type of property could mean they might land in your property instead of another client's property. That's right. You yeah. never know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that's what happened. You never know. <laughs> no. Well, dad's retired now. He sold the business. Um, oh, even better. So, even better. Yeah. Let's see what the quality of tenants look like now. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, my final question is just around, um, you've obviously put your hand up, AJ, to come along on and talk to the community and to share your story in an effort to motivate others that it is possible and the pathway in which I did it isn't necessarily the common pathway that we talk about day in, day out in terms of the podcast. But what are the message? What are the messages that you want to? You know, you've got the floor now. What are the messages that you want to share with the community around? You know, um, some takeaways for them. Yeah, I, I guess I, I came on to sort of show like I, I had never really earned big money in, until recently. Um, not big money, but you know, I've been a pretty average income earner um, over over my time, and because I couldn't afford to buy in big city centres. Um, you, you can still do it and still still get a reasonable um, property portfolio by buying regionally. Um, and 
and if that's what you've got to do because you only earn fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, um, then then do that rather than doing nothing. Mm. Well, I think it's a simple but effective message, mate. And how, how's the land tax bills going? Are you uh, like you know? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll be well into that this year, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> with the Newcastle properties, you will build that. You know, the sort of. Uh, properties on the lake there as well that that's that's going to start to creep up but that's yep. another reason why you know those taree properties you might say get that pay the owner occupied debt down and then you know basically be a borderless investor with the next one if you need to but yep. uh, i mean we're sort of we're, we're you know sort of shaving at the edges here it's a it's a good good portfolio and probably something to just you know go go surfing again right <laughs> It's an incredible story, AJ, because um, it's a, it's a timely reminder that the balance sheet is the vanity. It's the cash flow where the sanity is, right? Because you were chasing, uh, you said one hundred twelve thousand dollars in in income. That's that's what you spend. Uh, that's what spits off the portfolio that actually allows you to have the the portfolio, rather than what's on the balance sheet that is just on paper, right? So, um, so my my final question or observation, and then and then question for you is. Um, you know, compounding is going to work very well for you. I mean, it's you're 38, but it's we've got to remember that you've been in the game for 22 years. Like, so that's yeah. that's a lot. And a lot of a lot of what we're talking about is the third decade is where the juice is. And it sounds like the third decade is going to um, be very very productive for you. Um, what I think this story has demonstrated is a wonderful um, um, illustration to the community that in, accumulating property is just a, a slow process of buying properties, breaking paradigms, expanding paradigms, um, because your story has shown us from the very first property at $74,000, which was a lot. And then you just have to kept on having to break through glass ceilings in your mind um, because 74,000 went to 145, which was a lot. Then it went to 340, which was a lot. Then it went to 540. And then eventually at 1.35. So everyone who's buying property has to break those glass ceilings in their own mind as to how far will I stretch? I don't think that it's ever going to go up in value ever again. I think it's been a good run for the last 100 plus years, but it's going to stop right now. We all have those thoughts that are rattling around in our mind. So I think it's a real credit to you that you've that you've stuck in. But so my final question to you is uh, about, um, let's see if I can do the maths on the run, about 24 or so years ago, you had to um, make sure that your parents didn't see a slip that said that there was a camp available for you to go to. So how does it feel for you to now, um, you've got your own son, um, another one that will come in in due course. How does it feel to you to be have been on a journey where you've had this incredible mentor as a dad who who showed you what it's changed to paradigm shift at 14? And then now you've got a situation where you can spend a lot of time with your kids and they don't ever have to come home with a camp um, slip, nervous about the fact that you wouldn't be able to afford to send them on. What, what, what does that feel for you if you reflect on that? Oh, it, it feels amazing to be able to 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 potentially give give my kids a a, a better upbringing than than what I had. Um, I, I think that's the the goal of every parent. They want they want their their kids to um, not have to do it as tough uh, as what they did. Yeah, and I I'm sort of at a at a crossroads. What, how much do I tell the kids? Uh, do I tell them that we have X, Y, and Z properties because, you know, will they, you, you don't want them to be spoiled. You want them to make their own way in the world. And then, you know, when we die, do we just give all this to the to the kids? Or, you know, I, but I, I see it from from my perspective when when Dad started talking about money and we're having these discussions about money and, and about property, um, that's when, when, when I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So, so. That's I think you just give them the information and and hopefully you can give them the the right tools to do it themselves. I've reflected on that a lot too, mate, and I think it's they're good conversations to be having because I think um you know when you when you think about the chicken that has to um, struggle to get out and um, hatch the egg, if you help them hatch the egg and they don't go through that struggle, they often they often don't live right. And I, my my initial um, driver was I wanted to pass on to my kids. Um, uh, the fruits of the labour, but I'm I'm st- I'm reading a bit and I'm seeing and I'm observing and that that's not necessarily it's like giving your kids um, the keys to a Ferrari when they just got off their their L plates right. So 
I've sort of moved more towards um, as much information as I can teach them. I tell them about the properties. I tell them what we're doing. Um, Jack, you know, we want to buy a fishing boat. And Jack goes, why don't you just go and buy one, Dad, instead of buying the property? And um, and so I have those conversations around what does that mean and what does so on. I want them to understand that these conversations, because I have the conversation over the dinner table with them. I want them to know about the properties. I take them to see if there's maintenance. But I'm certainly probably um, more leaning towards helping them um, make sure they get that first roof over their head. Um, and then I will do what your dad did and mentor them into making the decisions themselves and taking the risks on themselves and um, getting all of the fact that they will have to peck through the egg um, themselves. So I've shifted massively, I reckon, in the last two years yep. on that very question that you're wrestling with yourself. And I'm yeah. probably sort of two years ahead of Bryce in terms of with my boys. So my lived experience is very similar. I'm getting the questions around how much do you earn, Dad, and you know what's what's you know what's the property portfolio and all of those types of things. And I've been um, I talk down that story um, and any opportunity I get to talk about. Um, how fortunate we are in this country and, and the more broader story is where I'm going. But as they get older, I mean, I think what you said earlier, AJ, about that moment when you were 14 and that sort of pivot and and that stuff was, I think, I think it's that later adolescence that it's going to start to make more sense, but it's, it's about the humility and, and being humble about that type of stuff, because I think, you know, my boys are working it out that, that they've got a sort of pretty good lifestyle based on, you know, the decisions that we made 20, 30 years ago. So I think yep. from from that point of view, they'll see it. But I think to Bryce's point, having that open dialogue when they ask the right questions, but, you know, I'm, I'm always saying, look, it's not about the number. It's not about the how much it is. It's just about, you know, the the smart decisions and, and understanding that, you know, this is the fruits, you know, you planted the tree or the seed 30, 25, whatever years ago. That's why it's a big tree today, right? Yeah. But they still need the struggle. The ones who don't have the struggle, and that's the story about the third generation who usually lose it, right? Mm. The second yeah. generation build on that because they understand, they get the worth ethic from their parents and the and, and then the third generation because the second generation is so busy. The third generation effectively have all the spoils because you want to give everything to everyone and they don't get the struggle. And so yeah. understanding struggle or appreciate the, the opportunity um, you know, and to you know, always again about contribution. So once you get to financial peace, that's pretty cool. But financial contribution is where it's at in terms of you know from that rewarding sort of you know position. And I think f- from our point of view, you know, we get to live that and breathe that in our business every day. And there is nothing more humbling than to see you know the contribution, the impact, the meaningful impact that we get to have and make with the people that we serve. So you know, all of those things are real. And it's the right type. You're so you're asking yourself the right type of questions, um, yeah. and I think I think you'll know when the right time is. Yep. Good questions to have. Thanks again, AJ. I think um, uh, in the in the the lead up to this conversation, you you shared with us that you wanted to come on last year's summer series, um, uh, but to to use your word, you chickened out because um, um, you didn't want to be a bragger. And I think humility is a big thing for you, and I can see that from the conversations that we've had and. Um, the way that you're structuring some of the thought process you're having. I think that I don't think that's going to be a problem for you, mate. And uh, I want you to know that um, the level of detail and the journey that you've just taken us on um, will be the, just these wonderful pebbles in the creek for people who actually want to know how to do what you're doing and see that some of the decisions you made and the thinking that you had at the time. So, mate, on behalf of everyone here at the Property Couch, um, we are very humbled that, uh, that you came on and were so transparent and shared your story. So thanks for doing that. Thanks very much for having me, guys. Thanks, AJ. It's a pleasure. Mate, what a great way to start summer series, man. AJ, 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 round of applause to you, mate. I mean, in terms of there's – I've got some clean takeaways here, really, really nice around – you know, firstly, I like I like the story around his dad. Mm. You know, started off as a labourer, running a pub, so working really hard, hands, physical stuff, yeah. not so much the mental stuff. But then transformed his career into real estate, and then became a mentor. So my first one is the power of having a mentor or a guide, um, and you know that has given him the confidence to take action. My second point there was interesting around. Started early, mm-hmm. got it done early. It's yep. transformational, the power of compound. And finally, for me, how do I wrap this up, Bryce? You know, terms in terms of my observation, Ex- exciting. No, 
<laughs> but disciplined. Yes. 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 So I really loved it. So it was a, a terrific story, AJ, and well done. Nice one. Uh, it also just gives hope for people that uh, who who think that you all have to do it in the, the big CBDs. Ben, if you listened to yep. our podcast last week, we talked um, very strongly about economic activity and what that looks like, but you can apply that in, in micro segments as well. So yep. um, there's, there's yield that comes here, um, not CBD. So there's just so much here that I love. I loved the, I loved the stretching of the mind, Ben, you know, Oh, I can't, you know, first property at 64,000 and then yeah. ooh, second property, 100 foot. Oh, I can't imagine. And then just the continual stretching of the mind around, well, what would I be prepared to pay? Um, yeah. so then yeah. the crescendo was 1.35 million. So These properties aren't going to go that much up in value. They're not going to be worth that in the future. No, well, yeah. How's that even possible? Go back to our episode of last, last week. week. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, economic activity, human interest, human behavior. It's all there. AJ, you're a legend, mate. Thank you yeah. for coming on. We know that it's um, nervy and, uh, you know, people always come on, Ben, at the beginning before you push record and they get super nervous and um, uh, we make it our personal mission uh, to make sure that people feel relaxed so they can just tell their story as it is. And um, uh, that was just a wonderful example of uh, transformation, um, how you can do it, how you don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth, how you methodically work through building a portfolio. And then in this case, um, you know, several properties with several million dollars in not only equity, but also managing several million dollars in debt. So um, it's it's incredible. It's a fantastic story and a great way to start the, uh, the summer series, mate. Mate, there is more to come. We have got another fantastic guest next week and the week after and the week after all the way through summer. So folks, wherever you are in this country, if you're starting to think about um, uh, holiday time, time with your family, camping, relaxing, fishing, whatever it is, make sure you're tuning in and listening to these wonderful stories of transformation, mate. But until summer series next week, mate. Ready? Uh Uh-huh. Your future self will thank you for taking action. Just thought I'd change it up for the summer series. Maybe maybe I'll play around with that a little bit. Maybe we'll workshop it. I like that. That's cool, mate. Take action because your future self will thank you for it. And then it's something a little bit different. I like what you did there, mate. I like what the sun is doing to you, buddy. But, um, mate, we will see you all next week, folks. Hey, guys, Bryce here again. Just want to catch you before you go and let you know, if you're new to our community, there are a lot of episodes to catch up on, but it's really important that you start from the very beginning at episode number one because episode one through to 20 share all of the foundational pillars and frameworks that you need to know to get the best out of listening to this podcast. So I'd recommend that you start there. And the little tip is to maybe start on one and a half speed. Now, for those of you that are time poor and don't have time to go back from the beginning, don't worry, we've got you covered as well because we've created a binge guide that goes through all of the details and makes it easy for you to read and get up to speed very, very quickly. So if you go to thepropertycouch.com.au forward slash fast track, you will be able to download that binge guide and you will be up to speed in no time. And whilst you're there, I've got a few extra goodies for you because we have our top five frameworks that you'll learn on this podcast, as well as the Make Money Simple Again ebook, which will help you with the foundations of basic money management so you'll have everything you need to succeed in building your own lifestyle design and getting the best out of this podcast. Now, just a reminder that anything that we cover on this podcast is not considered financial advice. We certainly recommend that you get your unique circumstances looked at by your individual advisor and everything we talk about is just general in nature. But folks, I wanna encourage you again to go to thepropertycouch.com.au forward slash fast track and you can go and get all those goodies and catch up right away.